Grab your Bibles, go to Galatians with me, Galatians chapter 5, as we continue on, the fruit of the Spirit. I hope this has been an encouraging study for you. It has for me. I always like going back and looking at things like this and seeing how much I've failed. <laughs> humbling, humbling. Galatians 5. Verses 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let's pray this evening and then we'll get into this tonight. Lord, it's just uh, grateful to be able to stand here, open up your word. Lord, I pray you continue to speak through me. Lord, let nothing of what I say be from me, but only from you tonight. Something uh, only you can give us, Lord, as we study the topic of peace. Lord, I just pray for uh, direction. I pray for clarity of thought. Lord, I pray for open hearts tonight, open minds. Lord, uh, use your word tonight to speak to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, but as we look at uh, the fruit of peace... Uh, there's been recent studies that have said um, the world has known only 292 years of peace since 3600 BC. Isn't that crazy? From all that time, from 3600 BC, the world has only known 292 years of peace. And during this period, right, there have been 14,351 wars in which 3.64 billion people have died, right? Moreover, in excess of 8,000 peace treaties have been made and broken. I mean, we, we live in uh, this stressful time, right? I mean, think about it. Since the beginning of time, the world has just wanted and desired Peace, right? World peace. You think of those uh, Miss American pageants and we joke around because all they ever want is, I just want world peace. Right? That's what the world desires and that's what we've longed for for so long, right? World peace, peace of mind, right? Inner peace, right? This is what we search for and, and we hear about it in the media and we hear about it on the, these programs. And uh, if you actually watch the Miss America contest, uh, I don't know why you would, but if you do, okay, you can. But everybody's desiring of this peace and, and they're turning to all these different things, trying to uh, latch on to and get a hold of peace. I mean, uh, yoga, right? Meditation, uh, Eastern religions. I actually had an aunt who uh, became a Buddhist for a short time because she just thought it was a peaceful religion, right? And, and it's interesting looking at things like this, right? They're, they're opening up their hearts though, and, and they're opening up their spirits to these different influences, right? And these influences are not helpful to them. Not like the word of God, not like God is. Right? We, we live in a stressful world. I mean, it's clear to see. Turn on the news. You get a newspaper, right? It's, it's stressful. Uh, and think about even uh, uh, the world events, but even in our little sect of society, think of your deadlines and your appointments and everything you got to do with the kids and everything you got to do to prepare for these hospital visits and everything. Everything's just stressful. 
We got to get there. We got to be there on time. We got to make sure that all this is taken care of before we even walk out the door. And it's stressful. Right? And because of this, we find ourselves saying some, some uh, cliche sayings. See if you can finish some of these. I'm ready to throw in the towel. Yeah. I'm at the end of my rope. Yeah. I'm just a bundle of nerves. Yeah. My life is falling apart. I'm at my wits. That one's familiar, right? I feel like resigning from the human. I mean, these are common things. I was joking around with the teenagers. Uh, shortly after Thanksgiving, I had a folded up piece of paper in my suit pocket, and I said, here's my resignation letter, you guys. I was like, I'm presenting it to the church this morning. And they looked at me like, what? What do you mean? I said, ah, I got to resign. It's like, I can't do it anymore. And they said, why can't you, Brother Data? I said, I put my Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm throwing in the towel. I was like, I'm resigning from the human race. One of the teenagers looked at me and said, isn't that just a suicide note then? I said, I see your point. <laughs> we redirected quickly. Okay, but we get so stressed out and, and some people are, are seeking peace, right? Think about it, in a bottle. They're, they're seeking peace through pills, right? But there's never satisfaction. There's a continuation of said pills, of the bottle, but there's never that moment when they're like, I finally have peace. Typically what happens is they get so far down those roads that they lose all sign of peace, Right, I want to look at some things tonight. I mean, the Old Testament word for peace is shalom. Right? It means a desire or a prayer that all is well with you. Shalom. Right? In the New Testament, this word peace, it means to bind together. Right? Think about this. The peace is not merely the absence of trouble. Right? It is the presence of Christ. That's what peace in our lives is. Right? It's harmony, it's oneness with God, with his purpose. Right? Peace is not being um, in a place where there is no storm, right? no, no troubles, no difficulties. That's not necessarily peace, but peace is being in the midst of all those things, right? being right in the middle, but being able to look at that situation and remain calm in our hearts because we know where our peace comes from. Number one here, be at peace with God. Be at peace with God. Right? God does not want to keep us at a distance from him. That's not his desire. That's not why he allows difficulty. That's not why he allows struggle into our lives. He wants us to have a personal and a very present and a very peaceable, right, relationship with him. That's his ultimate desire. He wants to know us, right? John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, right? Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's like, I'm giving you this peace. Me, God Almighty, right? Lord Jesus Christ, I am leaving this. Letter A here, peace with God is available. It's available. You know, everything in the Bible that God tells us he will do, it's available to us. Man, that's exciting as a Christian. It's available to us tonight. God's peace is this gift and it's to be shared with everybody. That's his ultimate desire. He wants everybody to leave a peaceable, loving, godly relationship throughout our lives with him, with others, right? The Bible speaks to this, uh, John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world, ye have tribulation. Isn't that true? Right? But be of good cheer, he says. I have overcome the world. Man, that's exciting. Right? Romans 5, 1 puts it this way. It says, uh, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is where we seek and strive and can get peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. While everybody else is maybe turning to different forms of meditation. 
right? The different forms of, uh, of trying to find this peace. Uh, we can be thankful tonight, right? We serve and we are in relation with a living God, right? And he's the God of peace and he's the God of comfort. Man, it's exciting tonight. Romans 15, says, now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen, right? C.S. Lewis once put it this way. He says, God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from himself, right? Because it is not there. There is no such thing. Apart from God, there is no peace available. Apart from a relationship with Christ, there is no peace, true peace, available. And we can seek for it and we can strive for it as much as we want. But we cannot forsake God and then automatically find inner peace. Right? I think of this cartoon movie that I like, Kung Fu Panda, if you've ever seen it. Right? And there's this little, like, uh, I don't even know what he is, right? The master guy, inner peace. You know what animal he is? Okay, I don't know what he is, but he's halfway through this movie. He's just looking for inner peace, inner peace. Then there's a little noise, huh. inner peace. Then there's a noise, huh. and he's always frantically looking around because there's always something interrupting his peace. Apart from God, there is no peace. Philippians 4, 9 says this, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do in the God of peace shall be with you. He shall be with you, right? As we walk with God, as we seek to apply his word in our daily lives, looking to him, automatically his peace will come over us. It begins to seep into our hearts and our souls as we seek and, and uh, ultimately try to live for him. Let her be here. Peace is available through Jesus Christ. Right? Be at peace with God. Peace with God is available. Let it be. Peace is available through Jesus Christ. I mean, think about the whole, the whole matter right here. The central point to the Christian faith is that peace with God is available. He says, I want you to get this. I want you to be aware. My peace is available not through church. It's not through baptism. It's not through your service. It's through me. It's through me, your heavenly father. It's through Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1, right? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sin created hostility, right? It created separation from God. It created conflict, right? The moment that Adam and Eve partook of the fruit, all of a sudden, this interruption with our sweet relationship, our sweet peace, Right? Between man and God, it was now divided. We were in a dead state. Right? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Romans 5 12. Right? We understand because of Adam, right? The first humans, they were actually created sinless. They really dropped the ball on that one. Right? Man. Can you imagine everybody who walks into those pearly gates? Thanks. Thanks. Out of love, right? Man, I, I can't imagine, right? They experience this wonderful fellowship with God. Uh, I mean, of the likes, we, we have no idea this side of heaven, right? I mean, a perfect relationship with God. What, what could that be like? I mean, how, how exciting is that thought? Right, this, this fellowship with God, and then they made that choice, and a result of their sin, their selfishness, right, they were banished, kicked out of the garden. Think about this, because God is perfect, because God is holy, he cannot accept sin. Right, he cannot accept it. It, it, it doesn't register. He's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. So because of that, Jesus Christ had to come and he became the bridge, right? This gap covering uh, our sin, making a way for us to reach God, right? To restore this peace between uh, these sinful, helpless individuals that we are, right? Without Christ, we could not get there. Colossians 1.20 puts it this way, right? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. 
I under, understand what he's saying there. We cannot have peace without God, but we can have peace with God. <laughs> without Christ Jesus, there is no peace. With Christ Jesus, there is peace. Those are the two sides of the coin. Just like after death, there's two sides of the coin. There's heaven or there's hell. While we're living, there's two sides of our coin. We have peace through God, through Christ Jesus, or we don't. That's how we're to live. That's how to, we're to understand this, right? Somebody once said, you may, or have you made peace with God, right? Uh, have you ever heard that? Have you made your peace with God? I think of people, typically, they'll get asked that uh, when they're very sick or they're on their deathbed, right? Have you made peace with God? Right? When my uncle was laying uh, in his hospital bed dying, I took a special trip down to see him. And my other uncle was like, oh, that was weird. Why did Daniel come down here talking to my mom? Wasn't he going to hang out with you? And my mom said, no, he's not gonna, he didn't come here to hang out with me. Well, what did he come down here for? To make sure that his uncle was going to heaven. Right? Where, where have you made peace with God? It's an important question to ask yourself. Right? We have to understand that we can't, though, understand that we cannot make peace with God. That question we often ask people, but we can't do it. We are incapable of making peace with God. Why is that? Because only Christ could do that. Jesus made peace with God for us. And now us, through Christ Jesus, we can have peace with God. Not in and of ourselves. Right? When we accept Christ, when we trust him as our savior, our sins are forgiven, we are reconciled. A relationship restored. Number two here, be at peace within. Be at peace within. Right? People, when they're, they're lacking peace, sometimes they just change their geographical lo location. Right? If I just get out of here, everything will be fine. I just got to get out of this situation. I got to get out of this job. I got to get out of this relationship. I, I got to find somebody who just completes me. Right? I, I got to find this job that's going to pay me what I'm worth. They're not going to stress me out. They're not going to fill in the blank, right? If we could just have this. If we could just get to this point. If I could just go on vacation to Tahiti. I would be fine. Maybe Hawaii. Looking at you, brother. Okay, the problem is, though, we don't, we don't get to run away. Right? We, we cannot run from us. I, I'm always with me. The minute I'm not with me is when people get concerned. Brother Daniel, something's wrong with you. <laughs> right? Then I'll be on pills. Right? But understand this, I am always with myself. I, I can't get away from me. So the problem with going to Tahiti, right, is that I will always be there. <laughs> right? I think of Jim Elliott. He once said, wherever you are, be all there. Right? It's good in the realm of as a Christian, hey, we're supposed to be there. But think of it from the sinful point of view as well. Wherever I am, I'm there. <laughs> Right? We have to be mindful of what's going on. Right? If we don't have peace in our hearts, right? if we don't have this peace through God, if we don't trust in that, it won't matter where we are. It won't matter who you're in a relationship with. It won't matter where you're working. Right? Peace only comes from above. Right? This uh, idea of relaxation right, is elusive for Americans. Right? It's, it's hard to, especially in today's society, everything is constant. I was just talking to somebody today about how busy our teenagers are. I was like, they are busier than most adults I know. And people like to scoff at that, but they are. They get up so early, most of them have some kind of practice before school. They go to school. Uh, I think of Drake, during school, he goes from this school to this school to help teach little kids just to go back to this school later on that day to finish out his day. And then he has another practice after school. And then typically homework, maybe if you do it, right? And then work, right? And then he works all night, comes home, got to finish the homework. Not to mention, hey, mom might need me to do something. I got some things I got to take care of. I got some chores I need to complete. And by 10, 11 o'clock at night, teenagers, 
right? Their minds are fried. This nonstop, all day for them, right? Relaxation is hard for us as Americans to grasp, right? And that's why the search for peace is so popular right now. I gotta find peace. Right? This, this new way to, uh, of escape for me, this new way for me to just get away from it all is to find peace, to search for peace. Right? And, and they got this thing um, going around, right? I'm going to hire a shaman. Right? I'm going to get this guy. He's going to come. Right? According to the Washington Post, shamans believe in healing people by balancing their spirits with their bodies and with their minds. You just need balance. Right? You, you just gotta, you gotta find your inner peace. Right? They practice this ancient art, right? Typically, it was almost, almost uh, always, almost always, excuse me, limited to places like rainforests or Australia, right? The tundras of Siberia. It says shamans, they now come in and they're catering to the aging boomers. Right? They, they're, they're catering to the urban spa class. Right, you get your spa membership, I'm going in and the shaman is going to woo-saw me. Right? I'm going to get that inner peace. I'm going to come out there on cloud nine. I'm going to be able to pose any which way I want to because I'll have peace. Doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Right? There, there's, there's no room in books. Right? We, we, could, we could go through uh, our Bible and there wouldn't be room. Right? I think of John and it says there's not enough... Uh, um, ink and there's not enough room in all the books to fulfill or to fill them up with all the miracles that Christ did. That was my horrible paraphrase of that passage. Okay. But it's saying, listen, there's not enough. Think of your books at home. There's probably not enough for the hundreds and thousands of illustrations that we could find regarding uh, this quest for peace, right? People are constantly looking for it. Even Rockefeller, right? It got to a point in his life that he was so unsatisfied, it says that his hair and his fingernails fell out. And his skin actually became like sandpaper because the agitation in his life. <laughs> right? He was just so stressed out all the time, agitated. He got unhealthy because of it. Right? We can try to find ourselves. We can try to obtain this, this elusive peace within, but it doesn't happen this way, right? We can't produce it. We can't get it just like we can't produce our own love. We can't produce our own joy. Proper love, proper joy, proper peace. It doesn't come from us, right? We, we, we've got uh, this idea we might find some f fulfillment for a little while. We might uh, uh, have what we would consider because of our busy lives, some form of peace for a little while, right? But it doesn't come. Everlasting peace only comes from God, right? Peace within comes from God. Letter A here, peace. Peace is a grace of the Holy Spirit. Peace is a grace of the Holy Spirit, Right? Get, get your mind around on peace is this, uh, um, we could call it a disposition of uh, the Holy Spirit, right? Created by the Holy Spirit for us. It's something that we can have access. And if he's working in our lives, if, if the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts, right? Then because of that, what happens? We get to experience this aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. Peace. Right? When he's working and he's thriving and we're following and we're walking in the spirit, as Galatians 5 puts it, right, up in verse number 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit. You're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? You're living the holy life you're supposed to, right? If we're not rooted, if we're not grounded in Christ Jesus, this kind of fruit that, that could be displayed in our lives, it just ends up being rotten, right? It's unattractive. Right? We, we try to produce it because we claim Christ and we claim the name Christian and people are looking at us like, you are stinky. Right? I remember one year, um, my dad got me a, uh, one of those goodie baskets for Christmas. Right? I moved out of the house three days after I graduated from high school and I wasn't even there for those three days. Right? I'm like, I'm out of here once I graduate, dad. And I was poor. 
<laughs> I, I was tired. I was run down. I couldn't pay the bills half the time. I was just beat up, and my dad got me a food basket. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I'm going to eat. And I got home, and I was so excited. And then I put the food basket on the counter. I remember I was like, look at that food basket. It was in my head. I wasn't talking out loud. But I'm like, look at that food basket. And I opened it up. I was like, oh, I got some crackers. Oh, I got some fruit. I was excited about the fruit, something fresh, right? It wasn't frozen. And I'm like, oh, awesome. And I reached in, I grabbed the fruit, and I pulled it up, and the whole backside of all the fruit was molded and rotten. And I said, my dad loves me. He didn't know, but I'm like, oh man, I was so disappointed. And as Christians, we say, I'm a Christian until somebody really looks at our lives and they say, oh, you're disgusting. Why? Because we don't walk in the spirit. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's where it comes from, right? God's peace is beyond our understanding. We cannot grasp it. We, we cannot formulate the thoughts to even explain God's peace to people, right? But it's available to us. And I'm thankful for it. Right? He wants uh, us now to give our burdens to him, right? Cast your cares upon him for he careth for you, right? He in turn then grants indescribable peace, beautiful peace. You know, the word uh, worry is from this German word, worgen, right? And it actually means to choke, right? To choke. I don't know if I said the German word right. Just go with it. Okay, but to choke, right? So when we are worried, when we're stressed out, it literally, we could say it is choking out our ability to now concentrate. It is choking out our ability to now serve. It is choking out our ability to make right, godly decisions, right? Why? Because it is choking the life out of us. I am so upset about this situation. I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. And you know what? It's easy to do that. It's easy to walk around like somebody's got their hands on your neck because there's a lot to worry about because it's hard to have peace in today's society unless we truly seek it from God, right? There was a, uh, a story about some Korean Christians and they were being persecuted for their faith and what they said, I mean, it's crazy. Listen, it says, they said, we are just like nails. The harder you drive us, the deeper you drive us. The deeper you drive us, the more peaceful it becomes. That's tough. That's hard to swallow. I don't, I don't want to be driven. In. <laughs> I have a sensitive top of my head. I don't want it to be hit with a hammer. Right? Hey, lay off the burdens, lay off the persecution. I'll, I'll just try to get by. Right? It, it doesn't really matter, though, how great the pressure is. Think about this. It only matters where the pressure lies. Is the pressure completely on us, or are we able to lay it with Christ? Lord, I know that you're in control. Lord, I know that you have your hand on this. Lord, I'm giving the pressure to you. Right? We have to be sure that this pressure never uh, comes between us and our relationship with Christ. And that's what we do. And that's why people walked around so stressed out all the time. That's why I walked around so stressed out sometimes. Because my relationship might be off kilter. It, it's not exactly where it should be. It's not lined up appropriately. Right? We have to give the pressure to Christ. Let her be here. God's peace is sustained by the word of God. God's peace is sustained by the word of God, right? Peace is this, uh, uh, we could call it an invincible force in our hearts, right? It, it, it's there, it's able to withstand things, it, it's able to hold on, it, it's in our hearts that, and we can uh, only have it sustained now though by God's word, 
by this constant inflowing of God's peace in our lives. Right? Everybody desires peace. We all want it. I mean, if you don't, it's weird. I mean, people do walk around in today's society and they are basically addicted to stress. Right? They put themselves into stressful situations because they are not familiar. They don't know how to live outside of this environment of stress. Right? And it's, it's, it's sad to see that. Right? This way, though, that we can find inner peace is by thinking about the cross, about thinking about Calvary. Right? That's one way that we can uh, uh, focus our lives and find this peace. It, it puts uh, uh, so many things into perspective when we think about the cross. And Isaiah 26, verse number three says this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Right? Psalms 119, 165 puts it this way. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Right? So a Christian, we could say, who is, is bent on uh, um, being out of shape or, or being upset at other people, uh, uh, not uh, saturating our hearts in the word of God, not seeking God out, right? We're suffering. We're struggling because we're not uh, putting the right perspective on things, right? God's peace will rule your heart as Colossians 3.15 puts it, right? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, right? To the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. And be ye thankful, right? Because our soul is open to vulnerability, Right? Because of our state as people, God placed a peace inside of us. At that moment that we accepted Christ Jesus, right? I give you, I leave the comforter with you. In this moment that God placed his peace, he intended for that peace to rule over the soul. I want this to just encompass your life. I want you to have peace, he says. When our soul is, is, is burdened down, when we're struggling, when we're uh, just unhappy, when we're agitated, overwhelmed, right? Too much going on, when we're just tired from all the worrying in our lives, right? We've, I've been there, right? And we get into these situations, but in those moments, the peace of God still presides over us. Right? The, the peace of God is still available to us and is offering this sense of calmness. Right? And, it, and it's very difficult to explain, but God tells us we have this access. God's peace is intended. Right? And it, it is intended to preserve our hearts. It is intended to encompass our souls for this purpose. When you struggle, I'll give you peace. Number three here, be at peace in relationships. Be at peace in relationships. Most of our problems in life are people problems. Right? There's the old saying, ministry would be wonderful if it wasn't for the people. Right? That's everybody. Man, think of the people in your life. And you say, man, my life would be so much easier if so-and-so wasn't here, so-and-so wasn't here, so-and-so wasn't here. Or maybe so-and-so would just take out the trash every now and then. Or so-and-so would just take out the trash every now and then. Or, or maybe if so-and-so would just take out the trash once in a while. Right? And we focus on these things and our problems are all focused on them. And, and very few people, though, schedule a counseling appointment just to say things like, uh, let me tell you about my uh, carburetor. I, I need counseling right now. I got a big weed problem in my yard. That, that's not what they do. They schedule counseling and they're going to sit down and they're going to discuss their problems that they have with people. That's typically what happens. It puts it this way. It says, many psychologists and psychiatrists do not understand the power and the presence of God in this area. Right? They try to reconcile two people without including God as part of the equation. Man, how true is that? Right? All relationships have to be aligned vertically before they're aligned horizontally. 
Right? There's the image of the triangle, if you've never seen this, right? And you have a, a three-point triangle, and you write God at the top, and you can write me, and you can write you. As we grow closer to God, by default, we're growing closer to each other, right? And, and that's what he's getting at. Listen, this peace, everything is here. We can reconcile the issues with each other if we're focused on God, growing closer, Hebrews 12, 14 says this, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Listen, if we're not seeking peace with one another, right, in our relationships, God's not in it. You're not going to see God. You're not going to see the Lord in your relationships, right? Once we're at peace with God, though, there's some areas in our lives uh, that need some uh, this presence of peace, right? Letter A here, in our homes. In our homes, right? We need peace in our home. I mean, if that's not evident by uh, uh, the way society is right now, we need God in our homes. Right, Colossians 3.15 puts it this way, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful Right? Striving together. When, when a married couple gives each other the silent treatment after an argument. Right? Think of this. What are they doing? They are disregarding God's peace. Right? God's not in that. When, when a child chooses to just ignore their parents. Right? When they are causing their parents massive amounts of frustration, they are ignoring the promise of peace from God. I'm not trusting God right now. Right? The peace uh, to which we have free access in all of our relationships, especially in the home. Right? When there's backbiting, when there's quarreling, when there's constant fighting in there, God's peace has been rejected from that house. I'm not accepting your peace, God. I'd rather be combative. We have to be careful. Right? Our homes ought to be a place uh, where there is peace. Right? Usually there's that one room in the house. Right? My bedroom. That's my peaceful room. Right? I don't put electronics in there. I'm going to keep the bed nice and tight. I'm going to keep everything perfect. I'm going to go in there for my peace. We don't have a peace room in our house. <laughs> we have a six-year-old. <laughs> okay, but we get this idea, right? I read this, it says, Satan will viciously attack the home and God may not take these attacks away, but he will and he has, right? Provide a peace that allows you to live out everyday trials contentedly. Man, he allows us the opportunity to live contentedly. Let her be here. We have to have peace in our relationships in our churches, in our churches, Right? We need peace in church. Right? The house of God, God of peace, there should be peace in the church. Right? 1 Corinthians 14, 13 says this, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Right? As in all churches of the saints. So when the church is bickering and fighting and backbiting and, and always sitting on the back row of the I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, but when a church is combative, when a church is, is, is focusing on attacking each other, immaturity, right? Once we leave the service, we're going to roast the pastor while we eat our Sunday roast, right? We got to be careful, right? What is it saying? It says the church, as Ephesians 4, 3 says, it should be endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, Right? Ephesians 4, 3, I'm going to read it again. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's what the church is striving for. Right? It puts it this way. It says, are you the type of church member who makes peace or causes uproars? Don't answer that. He says, if you automatically believe that you are a peacemaker, you need to ask yourself these questions. Do I talk about others when they are not present? Do I envy other people's positions? 
Do I criticize the pastor's vision? Do I get involved? Do I have a heart to serve? He says, these are the questions a church member needs to analyze themselves with. Simple questions, but very uh, important questions, especially in regards to a Christian life, right? I mean, consider these areas in our life. Uh, where does peace not exist? Right? We, we are constantly in the society driven towards finding peace. Well, in your life, where does it not exist? And we have to refocus. We have to look for God in those situations. Maybe it doesn't exist in a circle of friends that we have. Right? Some people that we spend time with, even if they're at church. Right? Maybe there's no peace um, when, when we get into a, a situation with our children's teachers. Right? Or the boss at work. Or that coworker, or whatever it is. And there's no peace in that environment. Right? We have to get this mentality. There's always room for improvement. As a Christian, there's always room for us to improve, especially in our walking in the Spirit. Right? That's just natural sanctification. Becoming more Christ-like. Always room for improvement. Right? There's no perfect church member. Let her see here. We have to have peace in our world. In our homes, in our churches, in our world, right? God does want world peace, right? He does seek for that, right? And we need to not look to the president, right? Not to the United Nations, right? We're not looking to some world organizational peace treaty, right? We can't look to those things, Right? Think about this. World peace comes from preaching Jesus Christ. That, that's where it comes from. Romans 3, 17 and 18. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. I'm going to read that one again. This should be in your notes. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Right? Ephesians 6, 15 Right? It's kind of in correlation to that passage. It says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right? What is that talking about? We have to, you and me, right? We have to always be ready to give an answer to the hope that lies within us. That inner peace. That's what we got to do. Right? World peace can be accomplished. Right? We can reach world peace. But we have to do it as Christians pray for uh, our nations, our, our uh, societies, our world leaders, right? We can't change men, but we can pray to God who can change men, right? That's how it is. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Well, brother, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. I mean, we could read those verses over and over. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do outside a church. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayer. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Praying for the men around us, our relationships, for our leaders. Right? And our leaders, I mean, I would hope that they're uh, desiring to bring peace to the world. Doesn't quite seem like that all the time. Right? But there's no lasting world peace without Christ. It's not available. Right? Titus 2, 12 through 1 says, or uh, 12 through 13 says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And one day soon, he's going to come back. And I believe it is soon. 
the signs are pointing north. Right? It, it is coming about, and as Christians, we need to be looking forward to his soon return. Somebody once said this, sometimes the Lord rides out the storm with us, and other times he calms the restless seas around us. But most of all, he calms the storm inside us in our deepest inner soul. That's a powerful statement, right? As we rest in him, as you seek to rest in him, I seek to rest in him. This church seeks to rest in him as we're striving to reach this point, right? The fruit of peace just begins to grow in our hearts. That's, that's, that's good ground for it to mature and grow in, right? And then what? We will experience calm even in the midst of this crazy world we're living in. Peace, peace, God's peace. Amen. Let's pray, and then uh, we'll get into our missions thing. Lord, just thank you so much for this lesson. As we're going through the fruit of the Spirit, I pray it's helpful. Lord, uh, it's been encouraging to me. It's been helpful to me in my own life. Lord, peace is something that I think each person in here could say we struggle with at times. Lord, I just pray for your guidance. I pray for a constant desire to walk in your spirit, seeking you through uh, Bible reading, seeking you through prayer, seeking you through godly relationships, Lord, that we may know peace in our lives. Lord, we know that it only comes by you, from you. Lord, and it's for us. You made it available to us. Lord, I just pray you continue to guide us forward. Lord, as Christians, through our daily lives, Lord, and I pray we seek to uh, implement this fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Lord, thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen.